Welcome everybody to another class. Today we are going to West Africa. So excited. We're going to be going to make yasa chicken, which is one of my favorite West African dishes. It's super simple. It takes a little bit of time, mainly because we have to marinate our chicken overnight. So those of you who are, out, who are online should have your chicken already pre-marinated. And we're going to go over the process of making the marinade. So you guys know how to do that also at the same time. Um, but before we get started, we of course want to go through our safety. Because safety is super important, right? So the first part of our safety is going to be whenever you are cooking, you're always going to have an adult present. So adults, can you put your hands in the air? Wave them like you just don't care. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Next, you're going to always want to wash your hands. Now, uh, Shara, can you tell us a little bit more about how to properly wash your hands? Absolutely. So your elbows, or not your wrists, your wrists, your wrists, between <laughs> your fingers, around your hands. And if you've been out in the garden like I get out in the garden, you get underneath your fingernails. So 20 seconds of just scrubbing actually goes by pretty quick. And hot soapy water, rinse it off, and you're good to go. Perfect. Awesome. So the next thing we're going to talk about is, of course, Refri refrigerate your leftovers within two hours. So if you have anything that's that we after we get done cooking, make sure you have that in your fridge before two hours. So any bacteria and food warning illnesses comes up, we do not want to make have any of our food lasting over the day overnight. I remember as a kid that used to happen all the time. Just have food left over all night. It's very dangerous. It can actually cause a lot of sickness. So please don't have your food laying out all night long. Next is going to be make sure you have your ingredients prepared. So your mise en place should be all set out. Um, it should have everything measured out, ready to go. You guys should see it on your guys' table. All of your ingredients are right in front of you, ready to go. Make sure you have your tools as well because on your recipe there should be a bunch of tools ready to go. So make sure you have your tools ready, put assembled, all on the stove, ready to go. Super important. If you don't have that, make sure you're taking care of that right now. Next is going to be, assume everything is hot. Anytime we're working with anything on the stove or anything like that, we're always gonna make sure we have our hot pad or our oven mitt ready to go. So whenever we touch anything, we never have an accidental burn. Accidental burns are worse than purposeful burns because you never know it's coming. Nobody wants that. Exactly. <laughs> Next, clean as you go. So you should have yourself a sanitizing solution or some kind of lemon juice or vinegar, anything that can kill the, the germs that are on your station and clean as we're going. We're gonna be working with chicken. So it's super important. We of course have that separate, which actually gives us to our next point, which is keep your meat separate. So in its own container, its own bag, keep it away from all of the other ingredients so we don't have any chance of cross-contamination. We don't want any cross-contamination, super important. Um, and then of course the last and most important Safety tip is take your time. I don't want you guys rushing. There's gonna be a lot of chopping happening today, especially with onions. I want you guys to take your time and go through it nice and easy, all right? So, Shara, for those of you, for those of you who don't know Shara, would you, did you introduce yourself to everybody? Sure, Shara Anslow, OSU Nutrition Education. Perfect, yeah. and then um, could you tell us a little bit more about the organization you're representing? Yeah, I work for OSU and we have our social media food site called foodhero.org. Tons of really great recipes and uh, later you'll see a video that we made about farmers. Ooh, yeah. I love that. That's actually gonna be really important because you should definitely support your local farm industry. All right, so um, could we do a little bit of information about sanitizing because I think that is something that a lot of questions have rose up is yeah. like what is a proper yeah. amount of sanitation and bleach to water ratios. Right. So we have the CDC reference for you about um, how to make a sanitizer at home with bleach. It's a small amount of bleach, gallon of water, so and you can uh, scale it down. I think it's like half a tablespoon of bleach, I believe. Yeah, it's, 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 on, it's, it's, on, the, it's, it's on, on the monitor. The yep. Awesome. There's one tablespoon? One, one tablespoon, tablespoon for a gallon of water. Perfect. Yeah. Um, awesome. So last week we made Indian curry. It which was, was so good. delicious. Oh I my think gosh. I've, I haven't had so much chickpeas in like one day <laughs> in my entire life. Did you guys have, did you guys like that chana masala last week? 
It was, was it good? good. I got yeah. thumbs up. I wanted to make it for my husband. I cooked some garbanzo beans mm -hmm. and we got really busy, so I just turned it into hummus. Can't go wrong. Hummus is always a good way. And it is the number one way of uh, absorbing those amazing chickpeas. <laughs> yes, All right. it is. So um, on top of that, um, I think for me, I think the biggest thing that we got out of that one was the usage of spices, because yeah. I think spices are super important. Yeah. Learning about all the different spices and the spice trade, that was super important. Yeah. Um, and then one of the things we also talked about was proteins, mm -hmm. which that's huge. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we're making our chicken. But proteins, yeah. we're going to be using an amazing protein, which is chicken. Chicken. Yep. It is an animal. And we're also going to talk about whole grains today. Yes, yeah. whole grains. Because whole grains. who doesn't love good whole grains? I actually learned a lot that like I've been uh, skimping out on my whole grains when it comes to rice. <laughs> so uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that yeah. in a little bit. All right, so the first thing we're going to do before we get started is we're going to talk about the importance of the marinade. So in here, we're going to be making the marinade in a little bit, but we have our chicken that has been marinating overnight. Um, you're going to notice that it's going to be very different in color than the regular chicken that you guys have. Um, and that's huge because we really want that chicken to tenderize. And the process of tenderization of this chicken is actually the enzymes found in an onion. So it is being tenderized not just by the lemon juice, but it's actually by the actual onions itself, which is huge. All right. So, so this is food chemistry at work here. Food chemistry at nice. work. I like All it. Right. So, Teams, you guys are going to grab a big bowl. So everybody's grabbing their big bowl, standing up. Everybody up, seats to the side, because you guys are going to do a little bit of cooking. Um, so you're going to be needing your big bowl. You're going to empty your contents of your marinade in your big bowl. For those of you at home, if there's already in a, in a container, that's perfect. We're going to empty our contents of our marinade into a big bowl. And you can kind of see, oh, you got to be careful. You can kind of see the difference between the marinade chicken, as you can see right here, and the unmarinated chicken. It's a very big, drastic difference. So it actually smells really good. A lot of the, you can smell that lemon and everything like that. That's what we're looking for. And then oh my gosh. we're that going to get good. a plate. So this plate is going to be our seasoning plate. So you should have a red plate or any kind of flat plate around. That is going to be our seasoning plate. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our chicken out of our marinade. So we don't want any onions or lemon peels or anything like that. Just get it out of our marinade. This is super important. All right. Beautiful. Get that. Oh, man. I love this. This is looking good. Beautiful. All right. So we're going to shake off any extra marinade, any extra onions. Keep that separate because we're going to cook those in a little bit. So don't get rid of your marinade. This is key. So we get all this extra stuff out, put it onto our plate. All right, so we're going to keep this to the side. We're going to come back to it in a little bit. So right now, we're going to turn on our pots, our Dutch ovens, or our Instant Pots onto saute. And we're going to... So if you were sauteing at home, what temperature would you turn your stove to? Uh, we would turn this on to medium high. So medium out of 10, we're okay. looking at a 7.5. Okay. All right, so we're going to preheat our pans on uh, medium high heat. While that's preheating, we're going to season our chicken. So our seasoning of our chicken is very simple. We're going to throw some salt and pepper on it. Shouldn't be too hard. So we got the chicken out of the marinade. Make sure we're, check, we're shaking off any extra onions. And if there's extra onions, you can also, um, you know, just grab those onions, put it back into the bowl. All right. We're all set over there. We're going to let people catch up. Those of you online, you guys are good. Can I get some thumbs up in the chat? We also have Sarah on the chat monitoring, making sure you guys are all set. So you got onions in there. Yep, just pull them out. Easy enough. If you're going to use your hands, make sure we wash our hands because there is, a, there is still chicken juice in your hands. Perfect. Yeah, it's your opportunity to prevent cross-contamination. You don't want to go like this and then go like this. Perfect. So when we're seasoning, we're going to go nice and high so the seasoning get dispersed evenly. 
Be careful of the wind, the gentle winds. And then again, sprinkle nice and high. We want it to be seasoned nice and evenly. Yeah, that looks like a nice pinch. Yeah, a good pinch. All right, so we're gonna get our tongs. Beautiful. And we're gonna turn them over. So you guys should have your salt and pepper on your stations. Get those out. And we're seasoning our chicken, both sides. Do you want me to grab those little bit of lemon off there? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So again, that nice and high. Out of your way. Beautiful. Perfect. Season our chicken, because we like seasoned chicken. Yeah. Is onion hiding in there? Oh, it was, there very, it was very subtle. I like it. Yeah. All right. All right. So you guys should get that all just, all seasoned up, beautiful, looking good. They're all set. You guys are all set at home. Anybody have any problems with the marinades or anything like that? No problems. All right, good. We're all we're all set to go. All right, so our pot should be nice and hot. So we're gonna take go take our chicken to our instant pot, or our pot that is heating up. Oh, they're still seasoning. Okay, no worries. Take our time. Make sure we get them nice and seasoned. Hey, do me a favor. Could you guys uh, switch tongs with me? Just because there's like a ginormous tongs for little kids. <laughs> I will gladly take the big tongs. Monster tongs. Here we go. Yeah, I can, I can handle these. <laughs> All right. Salt bay it up if you need to. A little, little sprinkle on your... Yeah, there you go. You guys are doing great. All right, so are we nice and seasoned? Good to go? No, we need salt? Okay, yep, get your salt on. Beautiful. Those of you at home, make sure you guys are, your chicken's nice and salted. Now, one thing that's gonna help with the cooking process and makes it a little bit quicker is actually if you take your chicken out like an hour before we're about to cook it. Yeah. Because bringing it up to room temperature mm -hmm. means that it cooks a lot evenly and you don't have to worry about cold spots. That's super important. So our pot, it should be nice and hot. And an easy way to test that is by, and I'll show you guys in a second. We're gonna make sure they got their chicken to their stations. Be careful, two hands to the chicken, thank you. All right, pot should be nice and hot. We're gonna take our little bit of oil. It should be about a tablespoon of oil inside onto the bottom. Then we're gonna take our tongs and we're gonna be adding in our chicken. Should be nice and sizzly. There we go. That's sounding good. And super important, we're not gonna crowd the pot. So we can probably put three or four in this pot. If you have a bigger pot, you can put maybe all of them at the same time. But we do not wanna overcrowd the pot. And when it comes to searing, this is super important. We just want to put it in and leave it alone. So Don't no touch messing it. with it. No messing with it. Let it go ahead and sear. Yep. yep. It, if, if you want it to brown, you got to leave it alone. That is super important. So once it's in, you put about three, maybe four in there, and then we're going to leave it alone. Super important. All right. So we're going to go back to our station. Everybody back to their stations. We're going to talk about making the marinade. So this is a very simple marinade. Ingredients are going to include, we're going to have our, um, a quarter cup of oil, two tablespoons of mustard, one habanero, four cloves of garlic, and so, oh, this looks like Dijon mustard. Yes, you can use Dijon mustard. You can use whatever mustard you also have okay. in there. But we're using Dijon today, and we have one lemon and a half teaspoon of salt. So do we have all those ingredients? Identify all those ingredients on your station. I want you to put it onto your station. Make sure you have all of it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make a quick and easy marinate all in one container. So the first thing we're gonna do, grab a mason jar or we have our deli containers that we like to use because you can reuse them and repurpose them for anything you want. So we're gonna open up our deli container of oil all right, inside there, we're gonna be adding in our mustard. So we can use a spoon to take the mustard out of the little container. And that's two tablespoons of Dijon or whatever mustard you have. 
The one thing I would say, don't use like the honey mustard because it's mostly sugar and it's not gonna have the enzymes to actually make a really good marinade. So we wanna avoid the sweet, the sweet ones. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to get our peeler. So someone on your team is gonna grab a peeler and we're gonna get our lemons. We have identified our lemons. Everybody identified our lemons? got our lemons, beautiful. All right, so we're going to peel a lemon. So peeling a lemon is very simple. All we're gonna do is take our hand, put our thumb down, and we're just gonna peel it very gently. Now, if say you don't have big hands like me, one thing you can do, hold it down, and we're gonna peel into the cutting board. We're gonna peel into the cutting board. We're gonna take all the peel off of our lemons. I'm starting to smell a lot of different flavors yep. off of your chicken. I can, I can even actually kind of smell the mustard just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's smelling good. All right. So we're going to take our peels right off of our lemons. So someone's going to be doing that. Take a couple peels, pass it on to the next person. Now, the next thing we're going to do, can somebody on each station, we're going to turn our chicken because our chicken should be nice and brown on one side. Somebody's going to be the chicken turner. There's going to be four sides to our chicken, so everybody's going to have a chance to turn. So whoever wants to be the first person to turn, can turn. Beautiful. All right. So are your peelers going in here too? Yep, they're going to go in there too. Scoop them up? Yeah, go for it. All right. Teamwork. Make the dream. Teamwork. Yes. There we go. All right, so what's great about the lemon peel is kind of like we talked about the first the first week, um, or was it the second week? Oh, Some the second week. week. Some week. <laughs> uh, is It has all of those essential oils, the lemon oils in there. So that's going to infuse into the oil and into your marinade. So giving you that lemony flavor. It's going to punch, a really good punch into there. Um, and the great part about this also is, you know, you're, you're, going, you're not wasting any part of the lemon. And that's super huge because... Yeah. No one likes wasting any part of a lemon. So after you peel this, uh, would you store this in the refrigerator? You can. Yeah. Um, but the big thing on this is that peel is actually a natural barrier from air to touching the lemon. So right. I would definitely put that into a container or in a Ziploc bag mm -hmm. to kind of protect it from the air. Because I don't know if you've ever actually done, like peeled a uh, or zested a lemon and it dries up and yeah. withers really yeah. quickly. You want to make sure you kind of put those into a little container so it doesn't wither away. Perfect. Because now it's it can dehydrate very quickly. Okay. Good so, we have all the peel off of our lemon. All right. Almost. We're almost there. No worries. Everybody home. Is everybody good at home? Beautiful. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to crush our garlic. So, very simply, and I think this is something that a lot of people don't realize, is versus using your knife, which can be very dangerous to smash a knife. You can also bend a knife that way. We're just going to take our garlic. We're going to lift up our cutting board. We're going to put a garlic underneath and crush it, pushing our hands down. So there's four pieces of garlic you're going to be crushing. Pass to each team member and everybody crush your garlic and put it into your marinade. Super easy. So you're just getting the flavors out of there. Yeah, we're not trying to mince it. This uh -huh. is a very low tech technique. But we're, all we're trying to do is just kind of infuse it into our, our cooking. If you do a good job, you got this one. Next one. You got that one. Okay. There we go. All right. All right. So it's now for another turn. We're going to turn our chicken one more time. Side number two. Side number two. Or no, three. We, already did the, we did two sides. We're going to side number three. All right. Wait, yeah? Yep. We can turn our chicken. Time for a turn. There we go. All right. So, all right, so garlic is done, correct? Lime, these peels are done. In there. Mustard's in there. Oil's in there. Beautiful. Next, let's talk a little bit about some spicy <laughs> habanero. All right, so these little bad boys are very spicy by themselves. But what we're going to do is we're going to put in a marinade, get that spice a little bit more of a mildness. And all we're going to do is very simply give it a quick chop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if you're not into spicy, maybe use half a habanero. 
but understand this, it's still going to be pretty mild, so don't stress too much. So, and you can just leave the seeds right in this one. Leave the seeds right in this one. Okay. We're going to put it in there, and again, you can put that little top in there because this is just a marinade. You don't have to stress too much about these little tops. You can use the gloves, yeah. So one thing is when you're, when you're working with these, um, with our marinade, if you're using something spicy, you don't want to get your oils in. Like last week, we used the Serranos. Yeah. I touched my, my face a couple times and burned myself. So super important. If you want, you can use gloves. So uh, Shara has some gloves right here. You want to put them on? She'll show everybody the gloves. Yeah. A little rubber glove action. And we're going to need that in a little bit because we're going to get our hands into our marinades. All right. So we're going to go back to our lemon. So everybody got our lemon. We're going to kind of roll it in our hands. Kind of put a little pressure. Kind of activate those juices. Beautiful. Give it a good roll it up. Roll it up. Get those juices going. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. All right. Beautiful. All right. So you can feel it. All the, if you feel it, it's kind of nice and squishy. That's what we're looking for. It means those little cell membranes are nice and squishy. And all we're going to do is cut this in half. Now, there's two ways of going about this. The first way, of course, is you can use your hand and squeeze it. That's totally fine. Or you can use an amazing little tool, which is our juicer. Put it in. Takes care of our seeds. Very high-tech stuff. Use your strength a little bit. So you can do a little bit of both. Doesn't make a difference which way you go, as long as we get all the juice out of there. So that was the advanced way. Then we can go the low-key way. Don't really stress too much about the seeds, y'all. Seeds are okay. We're just going for the flavor of seeds. If there's a little seeds in there, it's not the end of the world. Perfect. All right, so. I'm gonna let you guys catch back up. All right, so first batch of chicken should be done. We're gonna take our chicken out of our pot and put it back onto our plate. Understand this, the chicken is not fully cooked. So it's not cross-contamination because all we're trying to do is brown up our chicken. So if the chicken was cooked, you would use a clean plate. I would use a clean but plate. But this is just step one in the cooking yep, process. Yep, this is just step one. So you can return it to this plate. Oh yeah, we can yeah. definitely return it to this plate. Okay. Now, super important, whatever's left over on chicken, put it back into the pot so we're gonna make sure we're searing all the chicken. Beautiful. Is everybody good, Sarah? Good? All right. Grab that chicken out. Don't drop the chicken. <laughs> Don't drop the chicken. All right, is all the lemon juice done? All right. So, we're going to close the top of our mason jar or our deli container, put the top back on. Question? Yes, you can put the rest of the chicken in. We got to sear all of our chicken, so put it all in there. Get it in there. Good job, y'all. All right, so top back on. We're going to hold the top down or screw the top down. Make sure it doesn't spill, and we're going to shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake it vigorously. That is the best way to stir something up yep. and get it well mixed. Shake, pass it to the next person. Grab on both and shake, shake, shake. <laughs> shake it up. Perfect. Oh, one thing we forgot. Hang on. Everybody stop. We forgot our salt. Ah. We're going to add our salt in. So we're going to add our salt in. Don't forget our salt. Put our marinade back. Thank you. You're welcome. Top back on, pass it to the next person, and shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake that marinate. Shake that marinate. <laughs> All right, so marinate's done. It's on the side, beautiful. Now it is time to get a big bowl. Beautiful. We're gonna take our chicken, put it into our container, beautiful. Time for gloves. Uh, it's almost time for gloves. So you can put our gloves on. If you haven't got your gloves on, let's get our gloves on. All right, guys, we're going to turn our chicken one more time. Time for our chicken to turn. Beautiful. 
All right. So next, we're going to get our marinade, and we're going to add it into our chicken. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that is a nice consistency. Well, that's what happens when you shake it. Yeah, that looks good. All right, Miss Hands, you're in there. All right. So that's the first step to the marinade process. Not too bad. Oh, that looks beautiful. Check All that right. out. Beautiful. All right. Okay. So we can put that to the side. We're going to come back to that in a second. Beautiful. All right. Now, so even we, though you've had gloves on, should you wash your hands after you've done that? Um, so for the most part, we're, if you have your gloves on and you actually touch some of the meat or anything like that, you should definitely wash your hands. Okay. That's super important. I understand we're going to be chopping up stuff to add into our marinade, but for the most part, we, you should always just get in the habit of anytime you, ask, you touch chicken, we're going to wash our hands. All right. So... We're going to, are you guys all good? Are you guys, got your chicken and your marinade in the bowl? Oh, on one second on the marinade. Okay, we'll wait for you a little bit. How's that chicken doing over there? Yep, chicken, we're gonna give it a quick turn. We're almost done with the, this batch of chicken. Beautiful. So last week, our protein food was bean. Yep. This week, we're on chicken, uh -huh. so which animal protein. is an animal protein. Yeah. Perfect. And the other one, do you remember? It Plants. was a plant base, and then we had seafood. Right? That's right. Three fishes. Three sources. Fishes, anything in the sea, shellfish, all that stuff. Yeah. Seafood. Add it into. Yeah, there you go. Make sure you get every all of it. Make sure you shake it out. Shake everything out. There you go. Get all your marinade out. There you go. Get it in there. There you go. Good job. All right, someone needs to get a glove on and mix that all together. So again, we're mixing our chicken. Someone put that cup right side up. And that cup can go down below. Yep, in the, put it in the, in, the, in the dirty bin. Yeah, Beautiful. clean as we go. Nice. Clean as we go. Got a glove, one glove on, and you're just mixing it all together. All right. So it's already looking good. I it, mean, yeah. So the important thing about marinades is really about penetrating your chicken with a flavor. Mm -hmm. Because when you penetrate the chicken with flavor, it means every bite you're tasting all of this amazing spices and all of this lemon and the mustard, all that stuff in. All right, we got one last turn for our chicken. So overnight is really good for a marinade, but what if you thought about it, like what's your last drop dead time? I would say the, the, the like three hours. Three hours. I think three hours is, is a good enough time to let this set and everything mm -hmm. like that. So if you had to like rush it, three hours is a good way to go. Perfect. I think that's, yeah, that's going to be I fine. like it. Beautiful. All right. So next thing we're going to do, our chicken should be just about done. Um, let's talk a little bit about onions. So make sure you guys have your onions out. Everybody's grabbing an onion. Can we just Everybody? start on an onion too? Yeah, you can, you can start on an onion. We're gonna have to chop up three onions or about two pounds of onions. So we got some work to do. All right, everybody grab an onion. We're going to cut our onion by the top off and from the bottom off. So everybody, so we're gonna watch first before we get going, okay? So watch. So we're gonna cut the top and bottom off. Then we're going to cut this in half from top to bottom. Oh, you're gonna I got wait. It. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. Oh, okay, got you. Oh, so I just wanna, because I noticed it's starting to look done. So we're gonna get our chicken out real quick. I know we're multitasking. This is good, this is good practice. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot of good fond in there. This is not dirty. This is actually perfect. This is what we want. So next step is we got all our chicken out. If you haven't seen it, everybody go to your station. I want you guys looking at your Instapot. Come to our Instapot. Everybody to your Instapot. I want you guys seeing this part. So that beautiful brown flavor in the bottom of our pan, that color, that is going to be deliciousness. Exactly. Yes. And that's going to help flavor our dish a lot. Right. It's that concentration of proteins. 
All right, so all of our chicken's out. We're gonna get our bowl of the marinated onions as well, and we're gonna add it into our pot. Beautiful. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna caramelize our onions. So we're gonna take our tongs, we're gonna mix it. Now the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure we get our hot pad or oven glove, and we're gonna scrape the bottom. Now this is super important, we're gonna remove all that fawn from the bottom. And this is gonna help flavor our dish. So using your tongs, scraping the bottom. So fawn is a new word for me. Is that, is that another one of those French words? Yes, it is a French nice. word. Saute, fawn. Saute, fawn, searing, all these things. And it's, it's, a, it's a French technique now, which is really interesting because in Africa, there is um, French, people do speak French in, in West Africa. Mm -hmm. So this is a French technique of really kind of influence of a uh, fusion of French and African cuisine. So a lot of influences in French cuisine in Africa. All right, so your bottom should have all that fawn be scraped off and we're gonna leave it alone. This is super important. We're leave it alone and let it cook. Because what we're doing right now is we're caramelizing our onions. So while this is cooking, we're going to go back to our station and we're going to finish our onions. So everybody seen on the monitor or at home, we're taking our onions and we cut in half. Now this is going to make it easy for you to peel the first papery layer of our onion. And we can compost this or save it for broth, right? Exactly. So compost it up. So with this, we have our onion. And like I said, we're gonna be about two pounds of onions. Thank you. So from there, we're going to chop. And you can see there's all these lines. We're gonna follow the lines. And we're gonna use our kitty claws. We're gonna grab and pinch and chop. And what we're making right here is julienne's. We're always cutting through into the cutting board from top to bottom, tip to butt. Once you're about three fourths, we're gonna lay it down and we're gonna chop. Super easy, super beautiful. Oh, and if it gets a little too small, just chop it. There you go. All right, so we don't need this papery stuff, so this can, thank you. Yeah. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna to top it onto our chicken. Beautiful. So you're gonna do about two pounds of onions, which are three onions, um, two, three large onions. You're gonna chop all of them and put it on top of your chicken, all right? So Shara's gonna um, take some time. Gonna take She's over? gonna do some chopping. I'm gonna come over there with you guys. You guys at home, I want you guys checking on your, on your onions every couple minutes. We're gonna give it a quick stir. And then keep chopping. Quick stir, keep chopping, all right? All right. So I'm gonna put some music on and let's keep on the chop.
So you got, how is everybody doing online? Everybody good? Doing good. Love it. Almost All right. So you guys should be almost done chopping your onions. We're going to talk a little bit about mixing. Oh, this is happening. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get our hands a little messy. Um, unfortunately, I don't fit those gloves. Oh. So I got giant hands. Go it's okay. So the first thing we're going to do, is with our onions, I want you to kind of like squeeze your onions. And we're kind of like bruising them up, making sure A, they're separating, which is good. We want them to start separating. So just like you loosened up the cells of your of your uh, lemon, you're going to loosen up yeah. the cells here. Actually, so I want to do this real quick. It's just our bowl's a little too small. 
So we're going to do a little bit of, you know, what is it called? Improvisation. All right. So first thing we're going to do, let's get some of these onions in there. This is why it's super important to have a big enough vessel. If you don't have a big enough vessel, find a vessel big enough. Sometimes you got to be ingenious and use a bus tub. It happens. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up these onions and really start breaking those cells down. Now, super important when we're doing this, be careful not to touch your face because you will start crying. So we're kind of breaking it up and getting those, those um, enzymes in the onion starting to activate, have it readily available. This is super important. I love onions, and now I can begin to smell them. Yeah, and you can kind of see um, from above, like, all they're kind of really soft now, mm -hmm. and that's what we want. We're kind of like squishing that, that enzymes out. Next, we're going to get our, our chicken, all of our marinate. Beautiful. There you Thank go. you. You're welcome. And we're going to mix, and we're going to mix, and we're getting those enzymes all over that chicken. Help it tenderize, help it make it nice and flavorful. And you can actually kind of smell it. It smells really good. How are we smelling over there? Beautiful. Oh, hey, uh, Shara, I need you real quick. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the pot turned off. Oh, the pot turned off. So, I'm, getting you, I'm getting you a bag. I thank you. Need it. No, you're good. I appreciate that. So can you press the saute function again? Saute is on. Perfect. There we go. All right, so your ingredients are nice and combined and happy. This is beautiful. All right, so we're going to need a two-person situation. So the first thing we're going to do is... So if you didn't have two people, because I'm often doing this by myself, I put my bag like this over a bowl. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really smart. But, you know, it's you shouldn't nice be, to do it with so somebody. people at home shouldn't be doing this by themselves because, no. of course, their parents should be there. So parents, parents. You, you, are, you are the bag, bag holder, holder mm -hmm. for, for today. Yeah, which is a really important job. It is an important job. Beautiful. Get all yeah. that onions in there. Oh, nice. it's smelling oh, good. Looking, looks beautiful. There we go. Pack it down. Pack, Pack it down. Pack it down. No onion wasted. What I love is seeing how much these onions cook down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it almost like goes by. It looks like a lot now, like, but oh, my gosh. It's like a, almost a third. Yeah. All right. Is so we that? have our onions and our chicken in there. Now it's time to do some sanitation. So we're going to take a five-minute break. We're going to put some music back on, and we're going to wash our hands, soapy water, make sure we get all of our gunk off our hands. We're also going to sanitize our area, mm -hmm. and we're going to come back. And in that time... We'll be adding, um, we'll be getting our chicken uh, sauced up and ready to go. And this is ready for the fridge. Ready for the fridge. It's yes. going to go for about eight hours in the fridge okay. or three hours minimum, but about eight hours is max, is probably not maximum, but is a good amount of time nice. or just put it in at night, have the next day. Yeah, there we go. All right. So let's get our hands washed. We'll be back in five minutes, y'all. See you soon.
And we are back, everybody. All right, so the next thing we're going to be doing, as you can see, your, your onions are nice and caramelized. They're looking soft and amazing. So it's time to actually start uh, finishing our dish and getting this simmering. So what we're going to need to do is take our chicken and add it back into our onions. It's beautiful. And really push it down to the bottom. So you're kind of getting those onions on top. Yes, of it. get yeah. those onions in there. Yeah. Beautiful. So for those of you at home who are doing this in regular pots, get it underneath everything. Beautiful. Now we're going to add in our chicken stock. So I don't know if you guys remember in our first week we talked about using bases or uh, bouillons. This is our bouillon that we have. And you can kind of see, having this amount of bouillon versus this amount of water in your fridge makes a big difference. So again, we're going to open our water, add in our bouillon. And we're going to trash that. Right. Beautiful. And then we're going to put our cover in and give it a quick shake. Remember, hands on both sides. Give it a quick shake. Beautiful. And then we're going to add it into our Instapot or our Dutch oven. We're going to give this a quick little stir to make sure this is all submerged. You want all of your chicken underneath the water line. Beautiful. All right. We're going to switch it on to uh, high heat if you are using a regular pot. Or we're going to be adding this into soups or broth. We go. We're going to put this in for 30 minutes simmering. So we're going to bring it up to a bowl, down to a simmer. We're going to simmer for 15 minutes. Or sorry, we're going to simmer for 30 minutes and we're going to pressure cook for 15 minutes on high heat or high pressure. Top on and we're good to go. Okay, and we're done with this plate. We're done with this. So let's talk a little bit about whole grains. Oh, yeah. Now is a good time to talk about whole yeah, grains. Because we're going to be making our rice, which is going to be going along with our uh, yasa chicken. Yeah, so we do have this awesome brown rice, whole um, wild rice mix today. Yeah. And when you cook a whole grain like this, you're going to use a little bit more water and a little bit more time. Yep. Yeah. And so we have two different options. So on your recipe, it says we can use white rice. Mm -hmm. White rice is a totally easy way to go about this. Um, or brown rice. Both will work. So we're going to actually cook both. You can kind of see the difference. Now, brown rice is going to be a 2 to 1 ratio. White rice is a 1 to 1.25 ratio. So one cup of water, one uh, cup, uh, one and a quarter cup of water, or one cup of rice to two cups of water. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put them both in. Yep. There we go. Thank you. Yes. And then we're going to add in our waters, specific to what we have. So water done, and then more water. Perfect. Perfect. And then we're going to bring this up to a boil. So high heat on both. We're going to pay attention because these can actually get um, to a boil pretty quickly. So you want to pay attention and have your covers ready to go. So for it to, to at any moment. So, in, so water's going. Instant pot's going. Now. You had some, some information when we talk about whole I grains. Do, so I let's do. go with that. 
So um, we have this saying, make half your grains whole grains. And the reason that you want to do that is because grains have three parts. When you eat white rice, mm -hmm. you're just eating the endosperm, the middle white starchy part, oh, okay. which you called yesterday the... It's like the candy in the wrapper. It is so delicious. And I eat right, white rice too. People think I don't, but I do. I mm -hmm. love white rice. All the so time. I like to eat both. Um, the outer part of the grain is the bran, super important for fiber. Yep. Super important. And then you have the germ. That does not mean like on your hands make you sick. Nope. That's where the baby plant grows from. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So our um, rice should be, we just pay attention. All right. So, so when we, when we talk about rice, uh -huh. cause I think, I think when, 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 especially nowadays when it comes to like, if you eat too much rice, you get fat kind of situation. But it's really just if you if you eat too much of I guess the is it endosperm? Yeah, just the white too much, starchy just part. Just the white starchy part. Yeah. It's that like a lot of sugar and there's no fiber that's pushing that sugar out. So then that's where you would kind of get some weight gain, is that kind of situation? Or well your body does digest those starches really quickly mm -hmm. and when you have a whole grain it slows it all down oh. but in a healthy way in a, in healthy, a healthy way, way. yes and also fiber okay so um what we're talking about is your gut health right yes. we talk about your microbiome all yep. the bacteria in your gut that keeps you healthy mm -hmm. that um, needs some fiber yeah it needs some fiber Definitely. so fiber works in two ways um you have soluble fiber that's fiber that breaks down with water. Yep. You get that from oatmeal, apples, like in apples it's called pectin. Pectin, yep. Yeah. yep. And then you have the outside bran that is the non-soluble. And oh. that kind of keeps your gut clean. So uh, guts are big, guts are really big. Do you have any guesses how long how, your intestines are? How long? I hear it's like, I, I wanna say like, I'm about six foot, so about four feet. Of intestine is what I got. <laughs> you wish. No, I wish. actually, you have about 30 feet of intestine right 30. here, from oh. your mouth to you know, to the to the to the exit. To the exit, you have about 30 feet of intestine, and fiber in whole grains and in fruits and vegetables keeps everything clean, so that you're absorbing nutrients better. Awesome. So yeah. you guys should be taking a look at your pots. If your water is starting to boil, we're going to bring that from um, high heat all the way to medium low to low heat. So on our induction burner, should be about 210 degrees with a lid on. And you should be setting a timer for about 12 minutes. So right. I get a timer, anybody? Who wants my timer first? Okay. You have my timer, thank okay. you. And you your brown rice is gonna take about 20, 25 minutes. About 20, 25 minutes. Yep. And we're gonna check it, we're gonna make sure we taste it, and everything like that. But super important, bring it down to a simmer. Do not forget about it. If you don't bring it down to simmer, it will burn quickly. All right. Cool. So we got our gut health talked about. We got our rice talked about. Um, <laughs> one thing we, we did we did we talk a little bit about protein already about like the importance and the amount of protein because I think on our recipe it's about six to eight pieces. You guys should have about six pieces. So how much of those chickens should be a serving? A serving? Well, um, one serving is about the size of the palm of your hand. Okay. And you want to have two to three servings a day. Okay, so. It doesn't take much protein. I know, look at our hands, hands are different. I know, you can kind of see above yeah, like right? our hands. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, so I got like two chicken wings or two <laughs> chicken legs worth of, of meat I can eat today. How many chicken wings you guys got? Our legs. One chicken leg over yeah. there, yeah. maybe one, two. Okay, all right, yeah. so just, just remember that. Keep, keep that in mind, yeah. your, your need of protein for right. a day. I think and that's when we're looking at, like, we talked about this earlier, about yep. half the plates of your food should be fruits and vegetables. And what kind of vegetables would you want to add to a dish like this that's traditional to West Africa? So, oh, so what's traditional to, South, to, to West Africa mm -hmm. is a lot of greens. So, like, collard greens, mustard greens, um, beet greens. Um, it is a pretty dry climate over there. Um, it does have some tropical aspects of it. So it really depends on what part of West Africa you're in. But if we're talking about more traditional um, stuff like plantains, stuff like um, yams, yeah. um, any kind of root vegetables, those are really good as well. And anything that you can honestly put onto a fire and kind of uh -huh. roast it, I think that's uh -huh. a good way to go. What about okra? Would that be? Okra, yes. Okra yes. is a very big popular thing. Yeah. And actually, we talked a little bit about it yesterday, was the, um, the, the trade of rice. And we talked a little bit about like how um, especially in the West Africa, rice was very popular.
because they had rice paddies and everything like that. And um, when we're talking about the history, uh, when, we, when we're talking about the slave trade that went from mm -hmm. Africa all the way to America and end up in North Carolina, a lot, of, a lot of the influences in growing rice in Africa was transferred to America and put in North Carolina. So if you ever went to North Carolina and you tried out the rice paddies, um, it was a very big thing. It's yeah. a huge thing. So from Sierra Leone, you had these really talented farmers that yep. were growing rice. And so then people, you know, bought them and brought them over into, especially through South Carolina as well. Yep. You can see where all the ditches were dug and that they flowed water through and completely changed the landscape yes. to grow rice. Yeah, and it's that's, really and that's, and that's, I mean, that's amazing. And I think it's one of those things like the ingenuity of the people to be able to change and almost terraform an entire, yeah. well, like, east coast yeah. of America. That's yeah. huge. And, and they didn't have excavators like we have now. They no. They had shovels. They had shovels. <laughs> so you can imagine how many people were doing these things. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to go back to okra for just yes. one second. Yes, okra. I love this. I love okra. So one of the things that I like about okra is the texture. It has kind mm -hmm. of like a slimy texture. Oh, gosh. And it has those crunchy little nuggets inside. Mm -hmm. That is actually super important for your gut health too. Anything that has that like slimy mm -hmm. kind of gooiness, kind of like not helps gummy things bears. help things slide slide through yeah. your digestion. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's perfect. So okra is a really fabulous food. Okay. So um, who here has ever had okra in the chat? I want to see you guys hands up in the okra. Who likes okra? I love okra. I love okra. Anybody okra. had okra like fried? Yes. Oh, yes. oh, it's so delicious. Yeah, I uh, like to cook it um, with tomatoes, onions, and garlic and just, just saute, it, saute up. it up. Oh, yeah. that's delicious. Yeah, it's good. So yeah. who here has ever had African food? Ethiopian is Ethiopian one of my or anything like that? What did you guys eat? Ethiopian. Like, what, what specifically? What, did, what Ethiopian food did you have? Or at least tell me what ingredients you, you saw. Lentils? Yeah. Okay, that's very popular there. Yeah. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. Do you remember the name of that really delicious bread that's made out of buckwheat? Close. Close. So close. So close. What is it, what is it called? Aniri. Aniri. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it. when you eat Ethiopian food, you get to rip off this delicious, beautiful bread and dip your food in it and eat with your fingers. Oh, yeah. I love eating with my Anytime fingers. you get to eat with your fingers, it's a win. It's I a bonus. It's Total a bonus. pretty big win. Total bonus. All thing. right. So your rice should be about halfway done. Uh, we're going to take a quick five-minute break. This is going to be our last break of the day. Um, I want you guys to go. Make sure your stations are clean. Uh, and then when we get back, we're gonna finish our garnishes and our um, actual chicken should be about ready to go. So we'll be back in about five, maybe we'll go a little bit, eight, eight minutes, um, just to kind of give you guys some time to catch up or let everything simmer down. We'll see you guys back soon. Oh my God, I'm shivering. <laughs>
How's everybody doing? You guys good over there? Yes. Thumbs yes. up. All right. So your rice should be just about done. Um, so the big thing on this is we want to make sure that with our rice, all the water on the bottom is all nice and gone. Our kernels are, again, nice and separated. They look amazing. And um, I know we talked a little bit like, what makes rice white? Yeah, I like that. That's a good question to ask. So. Rice is actually polished. There's the outer hull that's taken off, uh -huh. and then you polish it to get the bran so, and the endosperm off. So you got like a bunch of little small like elves <laughs> polishing. Actually, polishing when rings. we did the mortar and pestle yeah. last week, um, people used to use a great big tall stick and uh -huh. a great big tall like bowl mortar, mortar yeah, yeah. and and then just work it and oh. work it just really carefully. You had to be skilled at that, and now it's all done by machine, but okay. people did it by hand. Wow, that, yeah. seems, that seems stressful, but also pretty cool. Well, it is pretty cool, except that okay, except when that. you take out those nutrients mm -hmm. from the bran and from the, the germ, yeah. you're losing really, really valuable B vitamin. B vitamins, yes. So vitamin B1, thiamine, um, when you know people who are scientists, they travel all over and they notice things, and they're like, "What's going on here?" So yeah. we had a physician mm -hmm. in the late 1898, something like that. Yeah. And he was in India, and he noticed this whole population of people in India had berry berry. Do you know what that is? Uh, I hear it's not pleasant. <laughs> it's not pleasant. Um, people's legs are generally bowed. Oh wow. So you just don't develop right. Oh wow. And he was looking at these people and he's like, wow, this is, you know, this whole population has a berry berry. Well, they didn't have a lot of other food mm -hmm. to make up for losing that B 
B, B vitamin, vitamin from, mm -hmm. white rice. Okay. from white rice. So um, we've learned that, that eating whole grain is super important for a lot of different nutrients. Yeah. And um, so the nutrients are added back into the rice. And people have this habit of rinsing your rice, you're rinsing yes. off the vitamins that are added back in. Okay. So we, so we ask you rice. not to, yeah, don't, yeah. don't rinse your rice. Don't rinse your rice. Don't rinse your rice. I've learned that because growing up, um, we, we make like sushi rice all the time. In oh, yeah. Hawaii. So like we always had to rinse the rice and it's kind of interesting. I didn't know that. And uh, it makes me wonder like all the vitamins we wash away yes. all the time. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's huge. Yeah. It's important to know that. So um, our rice should be done. We're going to put this on, um, turn off our heat. We're going to let it go. Our rice, our brown rice that we have back here, um, it's still boiling. It's not even close to being done. We still got like another five, 15 minutes on this. But we should, um, our Instapots are working. Uh, you guys should be um, having, checking on your chicken, making sure that it's still simmering. Um, you still have about another 20 minutes. But while that's happening, let's do our last knife skill, which is going to be our garnish, which um, you should have some green olives. So you guys have those on your tables. Perfect. There should be little bowls in front of you, those little bowls. You're going to separate them out. So um, so everybody gets a little bit of, uh, of um, olives. So split those between those two bowls. Beautiful. Perfect. And then all we're going to do with these is we want to cut them um, widthwise. So you see the little holes on the top? So these are green olives. We're going to grab them by the holes. And we're going to cut these right in half. And you're using your OK fingers. We're making the OK sign. Nice. So again, cut these in half. Boom. Just like that. Beautiful. All right. So like we're going to need to do about a cup of, of, of green olives. We're going to put some music on. I want you guys to get on this on, on your garnishes. Get these all chopped up. And uh, when we get back, uh, there's going to be some music playing. I want to see all your garnishes when we get done. So I'm going to check on them. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Music, hit me. Brown skin girl, your skin just like mine. The best thing in the world. I never tried to find anybody else. Maybe brown skin girl, your skin just like mine. The best thing in the world. Yeah, you're beautiful. 
And we are back, guys. So to start us off, Shara has an amazing joke she wants to tell us. OK, so how does rice say goodbye? How does it say goodbye? Uh, I see a, a grain really soon. <laughs> I know it's really bad. But I wanted see you to, a grain. See you a grain. Yeah, Sorry. rice is a grain. But I wanted to show you the picture um, that goes with this joke of the different kinds of rice. Rice is. There's so many different varieties, and it's so beautiful. And if you notice the black rice, yeah, yeah, that is forbidden rice. And rice forbidden. is forbidden. Why is it forbidden? Well, in ancient China, only the wealthy people could eat it. Ooh. Yeah, so it's kind of like weird classism about food. I don't, well, I mean, I can totally understand that. Back in my day, it's like if you got the teriyaki spam, uh -huh. you bougie. If you got, like, you, you got to make your own teriyaki sauce for your spam, but if you got teriyaki spam, oh man, you you, you you living it up. So there's always like... There's always that little classism little in there. Little classism of food, that's funny. All right. So um, right now, you guys should be checking your chicken uh, in your guys' pots at home. Um, for us, our chicken actually should be just about done. Um, so we're going to depressurize. So you should turn off your Instant Pot. We're going to pop the... There we go. So right now with our Instant Pot, for those of you at home who do not have an Instant Pot, we're releasing the pressure. Now, the way Instant Pot works is actually, it actually takes the boiling point temperature, which is 221 degrees, and bumps it up to about 350 degrees, which increases the amount of time, or decreases the amount of time for things to cook and get really tender. So something that we usually would take about 30 minutes would probably take about 10 to 30, 15 minutes. Nice. Which is good for, for anyone who's on, on a go or needs to get going. And the best part about it, no fire. No fire. And there are a lot of safeguards in these things because back in the day, people were really afraid of pressure cookers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because they were if, crazy. They that, were crazy because yeah. it was no real like, safety thing. So if you accidentally put it on the wrong way and it got to a point, it could actually explode, <laughs> which I think people are really afraid of. I know. A food bomb, as they would say. So you would get like food blown all over your entire kitchen. And then can you imagine having to like wipe down Yasa chicken off the well, windows? Well, actually, people got burned by them. And you can get yeah, burned. They, yes. they were actually really dangerous. But these are super safe. And what I like about them is how quick they are for families. Yes. And get I think home that's from work huge. And knock out a meal. Exactly. Yeah. So it will not open up until all the pressure out of these are, are gone. So it's a really amazing safety issue. Um, and if you are wanting to get one of these, you can get these online. And like I said, they come in different uh, versions. The one we have right now is a three quart. They go six quart, and it goes even up to 12 quarts. So they're huge, they're amazing, and they make time go by so quickly when it comes to cooking. So you can have your pulled pork, you can have your yasa chicken, you can have your beans. chili, you can have your beans yeah. cooked really quickly. Yeah. Um, and the great part about these, they're portable. So you can literally put all of the equipment inside of it turn the little knob and carry it around with you anywhere you go. There's a lady who actually made these very popular online and she goes and travels the world with her Instant Pot and cooks in different places. Awesome, so I any, want that job. Anywhere there is an electrical outlet, you plug it in and you can cook an entire meal. Nice. And the cool part about this is you can also bake with them. What? You can make a chocolate cake out of these mm. things and it's actually really cool to watch. You know, I have a birthday coming up. You know, I'll make, I'll, I'll make, a, I'll make a, you know, an eight inch cake out of these for you. Why not, you know? Yeah. All right, so our pot, beautiful, is nice and released, and then the moment of truth. Okay. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh yeah. yeah. If you can smell it, you should be able to smell it right now. Ah. Oh, it fantastic. smells amazing. I'm gonna grab my hot glove, and we're gonna take this out so everybody can see. Mmm. -hmm. Oh my gosh. So that is our Yasa chicken. That looks really good. Now you all can go home now. I'm gonna eat this. Yeah, inside. sorry. Bye. Nice seeing you. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our spoon, we're gonna get our olives, and we're gonna fold this in. Now, we're gonna be careful because our chicken, as you can see, is very delicate. Actually, it should be the point. Oh yeah, it's like falling off the bone. Oh, that's nice. So we're gonna kind of fold this in gently. 
so the olives get some time to like sit in the liquid and warm up a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, our rice should be nice and done. That is a beautiful liquid. Oh yeah. Should I get some bowls? Let's get the bowls out. Oh, so our, our rice in the back. I'm gonna bring this over. It's almost done, it got like another 10 minutes. All right, so two plates, this is very simple. Got our bowl, got our rice spoon. And we're gonna fluff up our rice a little bit because of course we wanna make it nice and fluffy. That looks like a beautiful basmati long grain. Yes, this yes. is a basmati long nice. grain rice. And it is white rice, sorry. White rice is delicious, I, I don't delicious. have a problem with that. But again, Half it's one of those- Half your grains, Half yeah. your grains whole. But it's also a situation of like, you have to also be very mindful and be like, hey, like we might have white rice tonight, but like we're gonna go and have brown rice another day. Yeah. Or what if up. you only ate white rice and then you had oatmeal for your whole grain or whole wheat bread for your whole grain? Ooh, there you go. There lots of whole grain options. There are tons of whole grain options. Yeah, quinoa. Quinoa, yeah. yep, yep. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna get our chicken. Oh yeah, this thing is. Oh my gosh, look at that, it's falling beautiful. Falling off the bone. Oh. And look how much the onions cook down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that broth. And we get that mm. broth in there. Nice. So, again, you're getting also a lot of that saturated fats from your um, chicken in there. Mm -hmm. You're also getting a lot of that collagen. So, kind of like that breakdown and that umami flavor. Mmm. All that stuff. So, again, we get another piece of chicken. Put it in. Oh, yeah. Get some olives. Uh, liquid. All right, so let's talk a little bit about farms because farms. we have a video for you guys. Yeah. And it's actually a very important video, and I really, uh, mainly because um, supporting black farms is really important right now, especially when it comes to uh, the farm industry. Uh, it was hit probably, uh, BIPOC and black farms were hit the most during the COVID mm -hmm. and the, during the pandemic. A lot of farms were actually closed forever now. Um, especially um, because the the fact of like farm, farms getting hit by COVID scares and actually shutting down, yeah. and also the fact that like a lot of people weren't spending as much money investing into farms. Right. So we really think it's really important to help support the farm industry. And this Saturday, we're going to be feed the mass is going to be at the Woodstock Farmers Market from what time, Cynthia? Uh, Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Sorry. Ten till two. And that's going to be a really fun, so I want you guys to come out, say hello to everybody. Um, I will be out there saying hi to people. Um, we'll also be doing a giant drive for our ambassador program, because right now our FED program, we go and give out free meals to the community, but we're also um, doing a drive to get fresh foods to the community right now. So it's a good way for you to come out, support um, our ambassador program, our FED program, and our entire organization as a whole. And, um, and meet some also, farmers. Meet your farmers. Meet your farmers. Yes. I think that's Support super important. Your farmers. Because mm -hmm. meeting your farmers is a good way for you to build a relationship with those people um, and actually having a good relationship with your producer. Might even give you some discounts. Just yeah. saying. And uh, we did give you the farmer's market scavenger hunt. Yes. So fill that out. Talk and to your farmers. See what they're growing. Exactly. Yeah. And then if you know what they're growing, then you can actually kind of be like, I want to try this. Might want to yes. try that. Yeah. And like yeah. I said, it's always good to make new friends anywhere you go. Yeah. All right. So there's a little video for you guys. I want you guys to watch it while this is happening. Um, the, the students here are going to be eating. I want you guys to check out your chicken. Make sure it's nice and tender. The internal temperature for your chicken should be 175 degrees um, or falling apart. Either way. Delicious. All right. So we're going to watch this video. See you guys in a couple uh, in a couple minutes. All right. And we are back, guys. Um, again, I want to thank everybody for coming out and checking out our food and enjoying the awesome chicken. I hope you guys are enjoying it uh, right now. Um, a couple reminders for next week. Uh, we are going to be doing um, Lebanese food. Delicious. Yeah, I will be here. Maya's going to be here you, all week. You and get to she, meet Maya. And, well, we, we all know. I mean, I guess... Yeah, they, they haven't met Maya. Yeah, She's Tuesday, 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 folks, yeah. They're you get Thursday. me, she does Thursday, so yeah. yeah, you get to meet Maya, to meet she's Maya. awesome. She also is Lebanese, so she's super excited for that. Yeah. And uh, so I'm excited for you guys to be trying, we're gonna be making an amazing dish. 
And we've actually known a lot because one of it is going to be hummus. Ah, oh, hummus. We're going to make it. actual hummus. Yes. I love hummus. Uh, so um, see you guys next week. And um, make sure you guys, if you guys are on Instagram, go to at Feed the Mass. And if you're on Facebook, at Feed the Mass. And also if you're a food heroes. Foodhero.org. Perfect. Send us your pictures and let All us right. know when you use our recipes. Oh, also, if you guys, um, do we have a poem for them? No, no we no didn't do a poem because we have the scavenger, the scavenger hunt, hunt. And then okay. we brought you that beautiful video. Okay, so no poem this week. Yeah. But I want to see you guys' poems from last week because I know there was an activity for you guys to do poems. So I want to see it next week. And um, if you have any comments or questions, um, love to hear, uh, to hear from you guys. Make sure you guys are emailing us with any questions. And uh, hang out, enjoy the food, and listen to some more of these Afro beats. See you guys soon. Bye bye.